I'm not gonna start an econ business unless I have at least five grand. And like, if I can't make five grand, then I shouldn't even be doing this project. I'm Mike Black, and I'm giving up everything during a global pandemic. The world economy has been crippled by COVID, but with the right mindset, we can get through this. I believe right now is one of the best times to reinvent yourself, and so I'm putting everything on the line to prove it. This is the million dollar comeback. You have to just put stuff out there. <laughs> it's starting to really hit me. I don't know what else to tell you. There's a lot more work to do. Alright, what's up everyone? Today's Saturday. I'm with Zach here, Thrift Store King. We're at Hope Thrift Store and it opens at 10. What we want to do is we want to go for the items that are going to go first, not what you want. Okay. So what's going to go first, do you think? I'm here for clothes, so I would assume people are here for clothes, but I don't know. So we want to go for the big ticket items, like kitchen stuff, and I'm going right for the blenders. There's got to be a blender. I know that lady over there is going for blenders too. <laughs> he's, already, he's already way ahead. He's on a mission. We got some clothes. I got a lot of clothes, actually. You know what? I'm gonna do one more run through here. I was hoping to get more shorts. That's a little bit of an L. Found Zach. Zach, how are we? Zach missed the blender. He didn't throw an elbow. I was waiting for it. I was do waiting for the. Do <laughs> you gotta be fast. I'm pretty happy. I got this guy right here. Kobe Bryant, baby jersey. Looked it up on eBay. I think we got ourselves a flip baby. All right, we wrapped up. We'll review when we're back. Next month, we'll just do All it right. again. All right. Every month. But did I really wanted that blender. That's I know, it sucked. I got screwed. Some kid totally ransacked all of the medium shorts, but amazing Kobe jersey, baby version, 120 a pop to 250 a pop. So I'm gonna list it for maybe 150. I bought it for 35, so it's a big win. Literally my favorite athlete of all time. Rest in peace, Kobe. Now I gotta bike to the office and get started with work. Oh, dollar. I needed some glasses, so. We rolling in style to the office. Gotta get this fixed. We're doing haircut today. Sundays are for haircuts. My hairdresser here. How much am I paying you an hour for this? We'll see how Zach does. I'm losing my hair. There's no saving that. <laughs> you still have it, right? So we're gonna work with what we got. <laughs> so Zach, how long have you been cutting hair for? A couple years. A couple years now. Whoever cut your hair last time took off too much on the top. So yeah. We're gonna leave it. All right, final result right here. What do you think? It looks great, of course. No, that's, that's not what you said. You said it, you originally said, it looks acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> you look acceptable. What's up everyone? I got a GoPro strapped to my head because it's raining out and we got our bike. So we're gonna get some good footage. We are going to ride to the office in the rain. Let's do it. <laughs> it's raining. It's not raining too bad. I'm a little soaked, but I brought an extra pair of clothes, so we'll be good. <laughs> How's it going? I'm soaked. Did you go for a while? Yes, sir. Where did you even go? Uh, I rode from my place. All right. Just completed my first bike ride in the rain. It's a lot of fun, actually. I packed a new pair of clothes, so I'll be dry all day. Luckily, it wasn't raining that bad, and I did get to use this GoPro for the first time, so that was cool. So we're going live for the first time in MDC history. We're using Restream, and the reason it's called Restream is it restreams it to all the platforms. It's reasonably priced, and I think they're based in Austin, so that's kind of cool. We're doing Q&A every Monday, 2 p.m. Just want to answer questions. This whole project is about helping other people start their business, get through tough times. So I figured this is another great way to help people. I've mentored a lot of entrepreneurs, hundreds of entrepreneurs. So it's pretty cool to be able to go live and answer questions because a lot of people are going to have those same questions. We just assumed 2 p.m. was good. Hopefully it is. No, we didn't. We looked at analytics. It's still an assumption. Deirdre gets very defensive with her, her YouTube analytics. No, 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 you're just saying we assumed. We didn't assume. We assumed. Based off analytics. 
Okay, so let me send him the Oh, you guys are on camera. Surprise. <laughs> I think we're good. You're on air. There we go. Hey, you're on, you're on. Good. I don't think we've ever actually um, spoken, but I have hey, comments. You're just in the live right now. <laughs> we're having some issues here. Sorry, we'll give it one second. My man Chase said there's girls on OnlyFans that are better at streaming. Yeah, we gotta we gotta pull it together. TP T Cycler asks, how do you deal with rejection and fear of failure when making sales? Failure is really learning right so like i got a job cold calling i just jumped into it i was like i'm so excited to fail because i'm gonna learn a lot more quickly if i fail like look at this live stream i could go into this live stream right now and be like freaking out like oh my god we don't know what we're doing we're screwing up here we're learning it's all good <laughs> it's all you're all watching us screw up you want to go from zero to a million dollars in a year you know that's that's a big goal man you look a thousand dollars more today than what you were yesterday but like a million dollars is a lot mm -hmm. well first off i mean the point of this project i really want to hit the million dollar goal to prove to people that it's possible but i don't want people to take this the wrong way and go i can make a million dollars in a year like that's not the point business is definitely a long game i think you've talked about like a business owner versus employee uh, mindset so if you could talk maybe how to get into that mindset is just, that's a cool skill gotcha yeah so the question is really like how do you get in that business owner mindset versus i needed to get a job mindset for me the mindset is if i get a job it's to learn something that i don't know that's where my mindset would be. I'm so big on, on mentor relationships. That's a big message I want people to understand is like, you need help, you need help. It's hard to do things by yourself, so get that help. Don't be scared to admit that you had help. Okay, so the question is, what's the most difficult part of starting and scaling a business? I think this is different for everyone. For me, the most difficult thing right now is being a little bit indecisive because I, I have a time crunch. Typically, I wouldn't have this time crunch. People's fear or own insecurities is what I see hold people back the most. They look at someone that has a seven-figure business or a six-figure business or, or whatever it is, and they go, oh, well, that person knows. That person knows something that I don't, and it's actually not true. The difference is I could care less about failing. Like legit, this whole project is to help you guys. I know how tough it is right now. I know how much I struggled when I first started my business. So the whole point of this is just helping as many people as we can. Awesome. Well, everyone, this concludes our very first Q&A live. We're gonna do this every single Monday. I'm gonna go live. I wanna help you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day. I appreciate you tuning in. I will see you all later. Uh, I feel awful today. You're sick? Too much coffee. That's yeah. black. Yeah. yeah well, I, I drink black coffee. The, the coffee I drink in there. You have the, we, I saw the tin. You have the cheap stuff. Well, <laughs> I like my coffee strong, but I guess that stuff is clearly not strong. And this is like crushing me right now. Um, all right, guys. There's no way with the amount of time I'm spending on my business right now, the amount of hours I'm working, the amount of hours I'm putting on MDC, there's literally no way that I'm going to build a million dollar business. So. What I need to do this week, I need to figure out how to get rid of the current work that I'm doing and maybe sign a contract with one of my clients on a retainer and actually go from a freelancer to an agency. And I'm gonna try to pitch $2,000 a month, I'm thinking, to do the marketing work, but hire someone else to actually do it. So wait, wait, wait. I, have, I have two questions. One, how much is he paying you right now? So right now I get paid $25 an hour. And you do on average how many hours for him a week? So right now it's taking him about 10 hours a week. So that's $250 a week. A week. So yeah. You're making a thousand dollars a month from this client. Yes. And you're gonna pitch him 2,000 a month? How confident are you that he's gonna agree to this? <sighs> I mean, I don't know. It's, I think I can pitch it because there's, there's a lot of value there. I'm almost at this point where I can't be working all these hours. I, I, I need to build my business. So in my head, if I was like, hey, I'm done. Now he has to go implement it. He's gonna have a hard time implementing when I pitched him for $2,000. Like there's no way he can implement it at the same high quality for $2,000 a month. So the value of what you're pitching is greater than what you've been delivering on your regular contract. Right yes. That's basically what you're saying. Yes. So, so pretty much what I'm gonna get someone overseas, they're gonna cost me about anywhere from 300 to like 500 a month in expenses. So that means I will net $1,500 to $1,700 a month. And that's profit after all expenses. So if you do the math, 15 hours into 1,500, that's, I literally go from making $25 to 100 an hour if he says yes to this.
You're, you're saying 15 hours a month? 15 hours a month. Okay. So that's the number one thing I wanna pull off this week. The second thing I have to figure out that's super important is after I cover my expenses, I need excess cash. I need anywhere from 5,000. This is what I've learned. I need anywhere from 5,000 to $20,000 to capitalize my e-commerce business. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is coming in undercapitalized yeah. and you need to be capitalized. So I'm not going to start an e-com business unless I have at least five grand. And like, if I can't make five grand, then I shouldn't even be doing this project. Cash is the biggest issue for me right now. I can make 10, 15, potentially 20 grand over the next 30 days. I just, I don't know if I wanna burn another month. I only have 12 months to build a business and there's only, I think we're almost officially at month two. This call is with my client to pitch him on a retainer. He says, yes, you know, things would be great. I could work a lot less. I could have $2,000 revenue coming in. If you think about that, if I had four of those, I would spend 20 hours a week and make $72,000 a year. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, yeah, so I guess first off, what I wanted to talk to you about in terms of like the actual social media stuff is I wanted to see if you'd be interested in kind of like switching up a little bit how we're working together. Instead of like me working for you guys like hourly, do like a retainer model. So I'm not, mm -hmm. it's gonna be around around 50 pieces of content a month, which you've already talked about. You already know kind of like the technical of what you wanna to put together. I'm looking at what's actually trending. I'd like to do like a 2000 a month retainer. I said we about 50 pieces of content every single month. No, no, that's that's all in, unless like you wanted to do other things. But if, if we did have to do more execution wise, then it'd be more. But yeah, that's what it, that would look like. And I could like send over an uh, official contract or whatever you'd want sent over. All right, we got a yes. We haven't signed a contract yet, but he agreed to the retainer. He's like, that's very reasonable. I think that's very fair. And everything he said was reasonable. He's been super happy with everything so far, but now I gotta really like step it up a notch to prove to him that like, hey, that, that retainer is gonna be worth it for you. But this is freaking awesome. This is so awesome. When I said 2000, he was like, that's very reasonable. It is, I could have probably charged more, but the reason I didn't is because it's important to do right for the people that helped you in the beginning. And he helped me. He was my very first client. He helped me get on my feet. I'm not gonna price gouge him and charge 3000. In this case, we signed a very unconventional contract that I would never recommend anyone else does. I understand this really well to be able to do this, but I'm signing a contract with our contractor on an hourly basis. I'm doing an interview for my new business and signing a contract with him on a retainer basis. That can be very, very dangerous. I'm, I'm telling you, you don't, you always want this contract to match this contract. So really I should have a retainer contract on this side and a retainer contract on this side. Because I know what I'm doing, I know, I know that I have so much padding that it's not a big deal. But typically you want this to match this. So if you're a freelancer watching right now, if you're a freelancer and you want to build a business, you just watch me take that step from freelancer to agency owner. Did you see how small of a step that was? It was really small. A lot of people have messaged me and said, Mike, I'm intimidated with starting an agency. I'm intimidated with hiring a bunch of people. Don't hire a bunch of people. Just do one, just baby steps. Hire your first freelancer to do the, the client work and just see how it goes, but still be involved and oversee it. So it's not as scary and intimidating. That's it, just hire one person. And you can see this one contract I just did is my first step from going a freelancer to an agency. I'm still overseeing the work, making sure it's good. I'm approving everything. But then I do that with another client and another client and another client. And then the next step is I hire someone under me to oversee everyone. And that's how you build an agency. Where we're at with everything right now, my new client that we're gonna hopefully sign this retainer for, they're reviewing the contract right now and hopefully getting it back to me tonight. If not, hopefully tomorrow. I know what you're thinking. Hairline's not doing the best. Zach, it turns out he's not, you know, he's not, <laughs> he's not the best haircut person. He, he did his best. <laughs> I get it, all right? I don't wanna hear about it in the comments. I look like a, f a freaking lunatic, I get it. I get it, let's just move on. If they get back to me tomorrow, that'd be super cool because tomorrow is officially the official month two date of this project, which is like, quite frankly, really pathetic. And for me, I'm a little disappointed in myself that it took me two months to find, sign an official contract. On the flip side, I did sign freelance work. You know, at the end of the day, we were able to kind of figure, 
He asked me for my ACH information. Hold on. I, I don't want to celebrate, though. The contract hasn't been signed, but, like, ACH? he needs my bank info. Okay. I'm so glad we're recording right now. <laughs> this is live, everyone. Live. Opening up my, my little petty bank account. $165.60. <laughs> they are going to pay probably with ACH or wire transfer, which means I don't have to pay any fees. It kind of sucks that I didn't get the opportunity to explain this to you guys, but they might have said, like, okay, we can, can we pay with credit card? The answer is no. Listen up. This is really important because I screwed myself when I first started Toll Media. Cash flow management when you're running an agency is so important. I did not understand cash flow management when I first started Toll Media. And I was like, what the hell is going on? On paper, I'm supposed to be making $7,200 a month, but I'm like strapped for cash all the time. And I looked in the time period between when I was paying my developer and when I was getting paid by the client was like 30 days. So I was constantly, it's called float. I was floating money. If you give your client, say, a net 14 or a net 30, which is just the time period they have to pay you after you send the invoice, they can screw you over. There's ways to convince, to create a massive value add to clients that prepay for your services. Charge a lot more money. Charge 25% more if clients do not prepay. That's my rule of thumb. The reason for that is number one, cost of capital. Number two, the risk that you're taking and them not paying you. Number three, you have to chase clients down now to pay you, that's admin costs, that's time. You need to get the money up front. This gives me the money to go pay someone to do the work. If they don't pay me first, I don't have the money to pay someone else. There's this weird thing in the industry of agencies, especially when you work with bigger businesses, that you're supposed to do a net 30. F that. It's a value take to say, hey, we're doing, we're, we only do prepayment. It's a value add if you say, hey, if you prepay, we'll give you a 25% discount. Make sense? Because if someone will not prepay for your services, there's a problem. That's my rule. That's my rule. <laughs> this is a big day. Big day. So the wire just came through. I looked at my bank, I was like, what the f***? 1500 bucks. Deal's not done till the contract sign and the money's in the bank. I gotta take that all back. They didn't even sign, they just sent the money. That's even better. It's not better. They need to sign the contract because there's some like important things in there. But this is this is huge. Oh, there's all this dopamine running through my head. Just start executing, executing, executing. Dopamine just blasting through my head. I, just, I have money now. Don't f***ing forget where I was at on month two. Literally starving, days without eating. Sleep deprived as hell. Month two. First contract. So I'm excited now for you guys that had seen that and then see what I'm able to do in the next 10 months. That first contract's gonna lead to another contract, we're gonna lead to another contract, we're gonna get capital, we're gonna keep deploying it, we're gonna keep moving, we're gonna keep moving, keep moving. Cannot wait to show you all how possible this is. You can do it. And man, am I going to absolutely kill it. $2,000 a month contract, I'm going to deliver $20,000 a month in value. Cause he's the first person that believed in me. You don't forget these people. Whether it's an easy yes or not, I'm not gonna forget, I'm gonna totally crush it. I'm excited. I gotta take a, a step back because when, <laughs> when things like this start happening, my mind starts racing. There's a lot of different routes we can go here. Dopamine, can you see it's pouring out? About to go crush some, some marketing for my first client, baby. About to go crush it. Hey everyone, that's it for this week's video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps us out a lot. And if you wanna get notified every time we release a new video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That's it for now, I'll see you in next week's video.